Are you a fan of Sega's Dreamcast console? Well, if you are, then this show's for you because we're going to be showing you a brand new game coming out in 2022 for the Dreamcast. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Game Boy Show. Welcome back to the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Yup, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new game coming out on your Sega Dreamcast. And we're going to give you details and how you can get your hands on it. Before we jump into that, make sure you do all the obligatory YouTube button pressing around this video. Shadow Gangs is a game that is out on the Nintendo Switch, Steam and the Xbox One. And now it's coming to the Dreamcast. Now this game did get some development back when it was originally being created but that was put to one side in favour of developing for the modern consoles, which I think is a very, very smart development strategy. The game is now getting ready for its Sega Dreamcast release, and you can back it on Kickstarter and grab yourself a physical copy. Now you can download now a demo from the game's Kickstarter campaign page, which works on the original hardware on your original Dreamcast, or you can use PC emulation. Now for this preview, we're going to be using PC emulation and we're going to be looking at some of the Steam footage to give us a sense of what we can expect from the full game as it's released. So, the story so far, you play as Dan, the Ninja Master, or the Crimson Ninja. Your family is kidnapped by the Shadow Force. Now the Shadow Force also go by the name Shadow Gang and are headed up by Freddie Mercury. You embark on a righteous mission to rid the city of the Shadow Gangs and save your family. Right from the start, it's clear that this game is a homage to the classic Shinobi games found on the Sega Master System and the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, but not just in theme. The combat and level navigation play almost like its 16-bit influence. You have ranged combat with throwing stars which fling out from your character at enemies that are not in punching distance. And then if you take on an enemy in CQC, you have a range of attack animations that play out depending on whether you're crouching, standing, or jumping. Enemy attacks are both close range and distance, with gunfire being the likely cause of your death. Some enemies are able to block your ranged attack, forcing you to get in closer to dispatch them. You move left to right and you can jump to higher sections of the level as well as take jet lifts down to lower sections. As you make your way through the level, you'll find boxes, boulders, walls and other things blocking your way and forcing you to take a different path, either above you or below you. There are checkpoints throughout all of these levels which come in really useful when you're playing on the easy and medium difficulties. And talking about difficulty settings, there are three. Rising Ninja is your easy level. Now the developers actually suggest that if this is your first time playing the game, you should play on easy. Have a playthrough on easy first before going for the medium difficulty, which is Ninja. Now Ninja offers a decent challenge. It's got some limited life and continues and it's for more seasoned players of action platformer games. Now Crimson Ninja is the hardest level and apparently the devs think there's only four people in the entire world that have managed to complete the game on Crimson. And having played the first level on Crimson, I can see why. It only takes two hits for you to die and there's no continues, that's it. You're out of the game, it's gone. So this is a really hardcore mode. As you make your way through a level, there are plenty of power-ups to grab. And one in particular that turns your AT sleeveless jacket and blue jeans into a crimson ninja gi. You can also do double jump, take out enemies with your katana, and you get to use an Uzi that shoots freaking bullets the size of your head when you're in this ninja transformation. You do lose this ability though when you die. You can get hit multiple times throughout a level, but if you die, if your life is all gone, then that's the ability over and you start from the last checkpoint or at the beginning of the level. In between levels, you will find bonus stages, just like the original Shinobi bonus stages. These play out exactly the same as the game it takes its inspiration from, with enemy ninjas running across the screen from left to right, and you have your trusted Uzi to take them out. The game has 15 levels, 6 bosses, and over 30 enemies. It supports the VMU for saving and loading, and if you have the rumble pack, you can enjoy this feature as well. Visually, the game is quite stunning with a very clean art style. There's up to six parallax layers that can be used to create some awesome effects like reflections in windows and mirrors. 
The detail on the sprites can be quite stunning at times, with grimy graffiti and dirt, or stunning cityscapes and statues. And at other times, it can just be generic rock textures, lacking the smaller details from earlier levels. The characters are well drawn and have a heavy amount of shading around the muscle groups. Depending on your personal taste, this may be something you like or not. Some of the proportions of the characters are a little bit off, but nothing that will spoil your enjoyment of the game. Now this kind of illustrated art style takes a huge amount of time to create over say something like old school pixel art. And because of that, I think the game has lessened or has less frames of animation when it comes to character moves. Some attacks and navigation moves like jumping seem to have only one or two frames of animation but the character animation still feels fluid and there is some great silhouettes in the moveset. There are some nice special effects in the game, impact bursts, dust kicked up when characters fall on the ground, fire, explosions, everything you could want from a game like this. Now the devs say that the game runs at a solid 60 frames a second and to be honest, in the demo I saw nothing that would make me doubt this. There are 11 soundtracks in the game, all pumping out this 80s-esque synth rock tunes as you battle your way across these 15 levels. The soundtrack fits the universe of the game and doesn't get repetitive or annoying as you fight through waves of enemies. There are also plenty of sound effects to accompany the action on screen, with Dan making the appropriate grunts as he takes out the bad guys. Mission 1. The City. Get ready. Now the Dreamcast version of Shadow Gangs will apparently have some exclusives over its Xbox, PC and Switch counterparts. To start with, there'll be a 7% increase on the vertical resolution. There'll be bug fixes and quality of life improvements to the game. And of course, there'll be the rumble feature, which is available on your Dreamcast joypad if you've got the rumble attachment. Now what I've played of Shadow Gangs on the Dreamcast, it definitely, definitely feels like a homage to Shinobi. Very, very true to it. It doesn't feel like a Dreamcast, brand new Dreamcast game with modern design sensibilities taking on an old genre. This feels like an old genre being brought to a modern console with all the graphical gumph that comes along with that. 
If you love Shinobi games, this game is going to be right up your alley. It is so authentic to those original 16-bit experiences. Now at the filming of this show, Shadow Gang still has just under a month left for you to back it. So if you want to back it, I'll put a link in the description below. Click that and you can go over there and see all the different options that you can use to back it. You can get digital versions, physical versions, collector edition versions of the game. Definitely worth going and checking out. If not, just to download the demo and try it out for yourself. Now, if you've enjoyed shows like this, if you enjoy retro gaming and you're new to the channel, why not consider subscribing? You can do that by clicking on a button just below this video. We also put out brand new videos every single Monday and you can get notified as soon as we've got a new show by clicking on the little bell also just below this video. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, don't worry. We've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos, two of which you can watch over here.